My name is Carolyn, and I talk to the spirit world. Travel with me to a dimension filled with love, light, and joyful surprises. Welcome to Carolyn's Psychic Playroom. Hi everybody, it's Carolyn Wilkins here and I am delighted to welcome you to another edition of Carolyn's Psychic Playroom. I'm always happy to see you, I'm happy to be here, and soon and very soon I'm hoping to be able to return to our studio at Cambridge Cable TV, but for now I'm continuing to operate from my house here as you can see you've probably gotten used to seeing this i'm actually sitting right at my piano so today on the psychic program i have an amazing guest this woman is just gonna knock your socks off she is a master chef she is a highly spiritual person she's a visual artist she's a sculptor she can sing she writes songs she's just you name it she can do it she's a gardener she's an herbalist and she has on facebook her very own cooking show and i have invited ms lehman mo here on the psychic playroom to talk about her new cooking show on facebook i know with the pandemic we've all been shut in and we can't go to restaurants we can't do this we can't do that so guess what we can still cook and with lehman's help uh, you'll be able to make some fantastic healthy creative wonderful recipes that she's going to show you so as i say i'm going to be talking to Lehman a little bit later on the program and before i go to bringing her on i always like to offer a little bit of a psychic reading for our collective we are now in the second half of april and who knows it may even be the beginning of may before you get around to watching this program so i always try to read over a longer range of about two weeks um, and so two weeks from whenever you happen to be watching the program i send that intention out to my guides and inspirers and that's what they bring me um, so it doesn't matter it's not this exact day but it's within a two-week range and what I've been feeling as we're kind of in the second half of April is um, a real feeling of accomplishment. I feel that there are things that you've wanted to do for a while and you finally were able to get them done. And there's nothing more wonderful than that feeling. And along with that feeling, a feeling of clearing away the clutter, which is kind of a classic spring thing to talk about but i feel like it's not only physical clutter it will be emotional clutter spiritual clutter and there's gonna be a feeling of having climbed at least one summit of something that has been bugging you for quite some time maybe you finally threw something away <laughs> that you've been sitting in your garage for a long time and maybe all right you didn't clean out the whole garage but you threw away something and likewise in your life you may find that you have succeeded in letting go or overcoming some problems or situations that have been with you all winter so as we leave april and we head toward the beginning of may there's going to be a sense of a new ah there which is lovely now i'm going to pull three cards from my wonderful african-american tarot deck that i've been using i've already used it a few times to read for you guys i'm going to pull some cards here and let's see what they have to say once again this reading is not just 
uh, for the moment. It kind of will encompass the next two weeks. And my sense is, although I'm interpreting things in a general way, you will also be able to look at each individual card and find a meaning for you personally because I'm intending that the cards are speaking both to the general and at the same time will have specific meaning for each of you. All right, so here we go. I've spread the cards out and the first one is this card, which is the Six of Swords. Okay, see that there? The Six of Swords. First of all, I will say these are gorgeous cards. I absolutely love them. They're so beautiful and they're so evocative. So here you have the African warrior, right? He's got death surrounded by swords. Death is pinned. Death is trapped there. Death is not coming any closer. Um, typically with the Six of Swords, we think of that as the card of journeying and traveling. So I want to say also that this warrior, if he feels like it, if, for example, he's mediumistically inclined, he can go over there and have a little conversation with death and find out what's going on. He's not afraid of death because he's got death surrounded. But if he needs to journey to the other side, either to gather information or whatever, he can do that as well. And up here in the top, um, we have an ancestor here. And I'm going to look and see who this ancestor figure is. Look at there. One of the things I really love about this deck is that it gives us an opportunity to learn a little bit more about African-American history. And in addition to the standard meaning, we also get a chance to see uh, and learn about new ancestors. So on the Six of Swords, we have Daniel Hale Williams. Now this is great. Remember I mentioned that this warrior had depth trapped here and that also he could also learn some of the secrets of the other world if he chose. Daniel Hale Williams was a famous African-American doctor. He founded hospitals including the hospital where I was born, Provident Hospital in Chicago, um, and he saved many lives. He knew how to have death pinned. So there you have it we have been dealing with just kind of on the macro scale as we all know we've been dealing with this covid situation we've been dealing with um the fear of death and the whole sort of pandemic crisis maybe now with this card is an indication that we may finally be turning the corner on that thing and that death is pinned a little bit and can be dealt with never completely eradicated but dealt with and not to be feared all right let's go on to the next card the next card here is oh now this is another of the same this is the seven of pentacles and as you see here uh, this man here is outsmarting death all right, I already looked him up before. He's running beside the skeleton. He's running, outrunning the skeleton, actually. And this guy here is dying, but he's going to be able to come and rescue him. And up here in the top of the card, you have Henry Flipper, who was a warrior, a very famous, he may have been the first African-American cadet at West Point. And so the idea of being a warrior for a worthy cause, and once again, outrunning death, outsmarting death, and saving people, and battling for the good and the true, that comes through in this card. And once again, it's a sign that maybe we're going to be able to put some of this fear, doubt, and death behind us as we move from April into May. 
And lastly, the last card here is card number 21, and that, I believe, is the world. And you see in this particular card, we have the holy man. He's holding the world in his hands, and it makes me think of that spiritual. He's got the whole world in his hands. I don't know if you ever learned that when you were a little kid, but that's what it makes me think of. And so for me, this is a very optimistic reading that both in the small personal way in your life, things are getting better and turning a corner. And in the larger macro picture, once again, we've got death pinned, We've got warriors fighting for us, and we are outrunning death, and that we are always held in the hands of God. So that is my little reading today for you. I hope that it resonates. As always, if you have questions, comments, or concerns, don't hesitate to write me at psychicplayroom at gmail.com or you can drop me a note at my website, www.carolynwilkins.com. All right, now, without further ado, I'm going to share this interview that I did a little while ago with the amazing Lee Min Mo. Hi, everybody. It's Carolyn Wilkins, and I am thrilled to have a very special guest here on the Psychic Playroom. This lady is an artist, both a visual artist, she also writes, she also sings, and she is an amazing cook, which I can testify to personally because I've had the blessing of being able to eat uh, some of her compositions. And in all of these things, she's just incredibly creative, as well as being a very deep spiritual person who is connected with all kinds of spiritual tradition. She's a storyteller. I could go on and on about this woman, but I'm going to let her tell you about herself. So please give a warm welcome to Lee Man Mo. Woo! And thank you so much for coming on the show, Lee Man. Well, I, I've known you for a long time, and you yourself is the most dynamic woman I know <laughs> on this planet. <laughs> I mean, I can't even think about any one thing you haven't even done and done well. You mastered everything. I mean, it's just like, oh my God, what else this woman's going to do now? <laughs> So tell me something, because I know that we could talk forever, um, yep. but I want to zero yep. in. Um, I have been uh, sort of browsing around on Facebook, and I yep. saw that you now have a cooking show that you do on Facebook. And right. this struck me as such a brilliant idea. When I saw that you were doing it, I thought, how perfect. Can you tell the people a little bit about it? First of all, what started you on this path of cooking? Because it's not just cooking people. I mean, anybody can cook, but this is cooking at a really high kind of gourmet level, but using very, very healthy food. How did you get started on this path? Well, I have to give credit to back in the 60s, 1960, 1967 or 68, uh, I was in New York and WBAI have just gotten themselves a fantastic uh, space. And I listened to WBAI, it's an alternative radio. And late into the night, because that's when I can hear all the latest uh, popular music. Mm -hmm. You know, when Frank Zappa came on, they play him forever until we <laughs> all went out and bought his records. <laughs> and so, you know, there's, you know, Joan Baez, yes, every famous person you know, BAI will play them. You know, for a student, I, I didn't have any money to buy a lot of records, so I was relying on them. 
And then I noticed on their program, they had a uh, Southern cooking show. So I went over there and I said, do you like to have some other kind of cooking show besides the Southern? And he said, what, what, what can you do? And I was, uh, again, being an artistic person, I said, how about Zen Chef? And, and, uh, and right away they said, oh, how, how are you going to approach this? Why are you calling yourself a Zen Chef? I said, well, that's the whole you know, idea about Zen Chef, that you're not really a chef, but you're somebody who can improvise. Mm. So they sent an engineer to my kitchen and I opened a refrigerator. I might have only three items. Back then, I was very thin. I have no money for food. And any food I have, I use it to go to concerts or buy art materials. So, so I tell the engineer, I said, all right, I have a little bit of yogurt. <laughs> I have a little box of some kind of mixed grain cereal. I said, I'm going to make muffin today. So from then on, the Zen chef just went on and on to basically creating everything you find in your house and turn them into some food. Wow. So it was, um, it was a big hit. Of and then course. I left New York and I totally forgot I wasn't involved with radio or anything. And there wasn't anything like that kind of radio station. It's like an avant-garde radio station. So, but then my daughter got stuck here. And my granddaughter got stuck here back in January uh, uh, when the pandemic just started. Oh. So they all live in my house and I have three generations all on top of each other. And my daughter, my daughter and my son who also live nearby, they said, mom, you should start a cooking show. You know, because you're stuck at home. You can't go anywhere. You don't have any jobs in the park. I teach art in the park. I go to the library, do storytelling all my job was canceled yes and my daughter's job all the way in tokyo canceled mm. so i think that our cooking show is part of the pandemic nice what do you do in a pandemic nice. you get stuck nice. and uh and for three months i couldn't even write a single word starting mm. from january mm. february all the way into march i was so 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 unhappy Yes, about everything yes. about the world, you know, the world yes. is part of your joy and happiness. So when my daughter says she wanted to work on a cooking show. So that's when we did the cooking show at Facebook. And it's mm -hmm. called Mother Zen Chef. Mother Zen mother, Chef. Grandmother, I'm a uh, college student. <laughs> and the whole family is involved. My son, all the dishwashing, setting up the table. My daughter does all the shopping and I did the cooking. And we always try to find what is it that makes this recipe different? Nice. Example, because that's what I was going yeah, to ask that's you what about. The is about that yeah. you try to find something unique. Yes. You're going to put it like I put miso in my pie crust. Nobody mm. else put miso in the pie crust. No. Right? Okay. <laughs> I say, well, instead of putting salt. I, I put miso in there, and then I took the egg, I mixed it with a little bit more miso, I mm. brushed the top with the miso. Nice. And the nice. So it nice. got this gorgeous glow. So that's just part of the, and I constantly telling people, look, you've been cooking that dish for 20 years the same way, right? Mm. Because it's simple. Mm. How about you just add one ingredient nice. that you do not think might fit? Just add nice. it and see what happens. Nice. So the whole point is like making people get out of the comfort zone, do something creative, mm. just like we start doing a cooking show. That's mm -hmm. not my idea about spending time. I love to just paint or write or play my music. Mm -hmm. Hey, this is what happens. Yeah. You know, yeah. you come together and we want to be, we want to see each other. I can't see any of my friends. Right. You know, a whole mm -hmm. bunch of my friends, they would not get out of their house. Mm -hmm. They are so scared. Mm -hmm. And so there's no way they're going to come to see me. You know, I mean, occasionally I'll be standing on my second floor porch and my friend will come down. They, they need about 20 feet distance just yes. to have a conversation with me. Yes. So things are pretty, uh, I would call it locked down. Yes. And we were in serious lockdown. And I was telling my daughter, because she's a life coach, I said, 
you should really advertise yourself to go out and give people more spiritual help. Hmm. This is the hour of darkness. Well, if I can that's, stop that's, you for one yes. moment, that yes. is absolutely true. We are in the hour of darkness and hopefully we're getting a little bit out of it now. Right. But right. I want to say that I noticed that a lot more people are cooking as right. a result of the pandemic because right. we could not go to restaurants that's right. and we could not do the things we normally did right. in cooking. Right. So Tell me about, maybe could you describe one dish or one thing that you have yeah, Okay, let me start made? with that when you were saying that everyone start cooking, because back mm -hmm. in March last year, mm -hmm. there was a shortage of yeast. Oh. And there was a shortage of flour, just white wow. flour. Wow. Okay? Because everyone's buying flour, it's buying yeast. And at one point, I said, oh, my God, what am I going to do? I don't even have mm. any flour. So mm. another friend of mine had to buy flour from abroad. So wow. expensive to bring it back here. And she and I shared a 25-pound bag. Mm. But then I start growing my own sourdough yeast. Wow. And then everyone started wanting to grow sourdough yeast. So that was like the biggest adventure unbelievable i started <laughs> reading about wild fermentation mm. and because you know I, I did a lot of you know pickles here and there so it turned out that your kitchen if you're doing any kind of fermentation your kitchen would become alive with these spores oh yes so okay. when you start creating the sourdough these spores are just like ah we love you <laughs> so they will right away make your sourdough happen but you wow. can start making the sourdough and start creating the atmosphere. So I started experimenting with sourdough and uh, using even fruit peels as a fermentation mm -hmm. agent. Mm -hmm. I said, how about you don't want sugar? Okay, all right. You save all your fruit peels because that's natural sugar right there. And then mm -hmm. also, if you do add sugar, the fermentation ate all that sugar. So there's really oh, no sugar left. Nice. Not a bit of sugar. Nice. But in the beginning, just flour and water. After so days, you see the bubbling and you see. So what happened is pandemic is like, just like uh, here, changing a little subject from you can't get any pets in the pond because mm. everyone is adopting a cat, a mm -hmm. dog, a hamster, even yes. a rat. Because yeah. they're locked, they locked inside their house. Yes. So that's why sourdough was uh, was a, was a amazing. Everyone started doing sourdough. Now there's an entire sourdough society just on Facebook. <laughs> so tell me it. this. Um, so if people want to visit your show, yeah. um, do you broadcast at a regular time? How can yep. people it's find regular you? Regular Monday night at eight o'clock on Facebook. Okay, eight o'clock Eastern Mother time. Mother Zen right? Chef, you'll see me right there in my kitchen. Uh, we, we, we start advertising it. My daughter start making a flyer on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then on Monday, start advertising some more, try to tell you to come. And we also ask the audience what they like me to do oh. because we did a whole show, a couple of shows in a row about sourdough discard. Because oh. when you make a sourdough, you have to get rid of the stuff from the cup and add mm. new stuff in there. So what are you oh. doing with that, with that stuff? How about you didn't want to bake bread? Yeah. So I did, uh, I did sourdough muffins. I did <laughs> sourdough pancake. I did sourdough mushroom sauce. I did everything. Oh, oh you know, my god! Everything with the discard. So that one cup yeah. of your discard wouldn't get thrown away. You know, and so, so there's, so that's a kind of, I would call it a spiritual renewal to know that we are not only the living organism here. There mm -hmm. are these wild spores <laughs> moving all over in our atmosphere nice. and they can help us yeah. when we run out of something. Yeah. My daughter is growing mushrooms, for example. Okay. Mm, it turned nice. out. We think that mushrooms kind of a little bit messy. In order for you to grow mushroom, not in the forest, 
You mm. have to have the most pristine environment. Really? Yes. Mm. You have to spray it with like really completely distilled water. Mm. So that will make you think about, oh, so the forest has a perfect ecosystem. Yes. Yes. So how to make us to be whole and healthy and spiritually whole. We had to create an entire ecosystem that's balancing us and the world. That's so, so nothing is taken advantage of. So I think that's what in some way the pandemic is teaching us. Yes. That we are related from the micro invisible spores to the physical solid a uh, 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 plane. Absolutely. So it, 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 it's a very deep, uh, you know, like if you're in a dark, take in all that dark because mm -hmm. that's the only way that mm -hmm. the light will appear. Nice. Okay. So that brings me to just, uh, and we only have amazingly, the time is going by yeah, I know, super I know. quick. By, yeah. But um, if someone were, I always ask my guests, yeah. if you had um, a sure. suggestion for a person who maybe wants to cook, but they're kind of shy or they don't feel like they have the ability and they yeah. never, and they, and there are a lot of people out there, unfortunately, who feel like they're not creative. And yeah. I believe everyone is creative if we just let ourselves yeah. sort of go. But do yeah. you have a tip for getting started, maybe for a person who's interested in trying to do some of these creative cooking things like you do? Well, I think it, it, you have to find out what kind of food you like to eat. If you mm. like to eat Chinese food, that will give you tips on a sauteing. I, I do saute vegetable uh, with a camera on a hot plate all the time to show them to demystify that Chinese flavor, okay? And then I did an entire uh, fusion taco. So, so I put in like the grill eggplant on my little taco with a little bit of cheese. You know, I said, here you are, you got a Korean taco now, okay? And, and so I did, you know, the African taco, you know, with, uh, fry the bean, put it in, you know, and add all these different spices. So it just depends what kind of food you want to eat. You know, that's the you first wanna, step. Yeah, yeah. If you want to eat very plain food, great. Try to plate it for the first time, mm. arranging on your plate. Mm. Okay. So mm. rather than say, oh, I'm so hungry. No, you can play with your food now. Okay. <laughs> you can pretend you're in a fancy restaurant where plating is very important. That's why they charge you $150 for that little platter of food because they have plated it very carefully very beautifully, mm. and then they drizzle a little bit of uh, uh, parsley or dressing around the outside, okay? Wow. So you can do that. You can mm. pretend you are in a, the most expensive restaurant in the world. Now, and they would not just put like out a fun. dish with a pile of food. They yeah. will have to plate it. You can plate. Yeah. So you don't even have to cook. Just yeah. plate. And you even know? the plating is an act of creativity. It is, is. what you're saying. It is. And also it's a kind of respect. Mm -hmm. I always felt like food, you know, when people say grace, mm -hmm. you know, if you're religious, you say grace, mm -hmm. you know, you say, oh God, thank you for this plate of food. Oh mm -hmm. God, oh, oh, oh God is Mary, whatever. That mm -hmm. form of, I call it communion. Nice. That the spirits out here are also partaking in this food. Lovely. The food, okay. Yeah. That's yeah. being harvested by some hand that you're never going to see. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and so forth. It, it's, 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 it's just being grateful. It's a very mm -hmm. important part of your spiritual past. That so is beautiful. Not a cook, if you're grateful about what mm -hmm. you are going to be eating mm -hmm. and how careful you're going to, you're going to display all your food. That's a mm -hmm. beginning. That's perfect. Oh, that's a beginning. That's Not talking awesome. about what's going to happen after you start plating the food. <laughs> I'm telling you, you'll be ready. Oh, wow. You graduated from Cooking 101. <laughs> uh, so everybody, this is a little bit, just the tiniest sample of the wisdom that you can receive when you watch Lee Min Lo on her cooking show, Facebook, on Monday night 
And do you, is there a website or anything yeah, where people there, there, can there visit is, uh, you? Uh, we also have a YouTube channel. It's also okay. Mother Zen Chef. Okay. okay. This is Mother Zen. Mm -hmm. And uh, Mother Z-E-N. A lot of people don't know how to spell Zen. Okay. Z-E-N. Mother Zen. Okay. So Mother Zen Chef, we have a YouTube channel. And we have a Patreon account where people donate like from dollar to $2 a month to keep supporting us nice. uh, because we buy some of the best food, organic wow. food to show wow. that we are not just doing the food. Right. We have to respect where the food come from. So um, yeah, my daughter is the producer, is a director. She's also does all the tech stuff that I don't know anything about. Uh, and then my son does all the dishwashing and cleaning <laughs> and getting all the counter ready. So, and, and he also does the taste test. He tests taste the food. That's so, a big job right there. Yeah, and people could always suggest what kind of food they'd like me to do. You know, lately, you know, I just did a, a honor for spring. You know, I did a, a galette, you know, with a completely low fat crust. And with, you know, beautiful, beautiful asparagus and peppers Lovely. and peas, you know. Lovely. So uh, even my granddaughter loved it. She, mm. she tested the food too, and she thought wow. it was amazing. So, so, uh, so cooking, cooking is really about uh, a spiritual balancing. balancing yes. Spirits. Well okay. said. So right. I'm going to leave it on that note. Yep. Obviously, you guys need to go check out this show uh, because as you can see, it's not only about the cooking, it's about spiritual wisdom, it's about positive energy, and it's just a lot of fun. So thank you so much, Lee Min, for being my guest on the Psychic Play Room today. And I look forward to seeing you soon. Yeah, and one last note. Mm. Uh, quoting from a very famous writer, um, he said, if love, if cooking is not cooked with love, you cannot consume. Ooh, boy, now that's truth. Wow, we know that spirituality is about love, the sharing of love. Beautiful. So my love to you, Carol. Oh, thank you so much. This You're was welcome. wonderful. You're welcome. Love you, as always. Wasn't that fabulous? I hope you enjoyed that. I just find her amazing. She's so creative. She's so inspiring. And she has tons of great ideas. I will say also that I've had the good fortune to actually eat some of the things that she has created. And trust me, her recipes are really fabulous. So I hope that you will check out Lee Min's cooking show on Facebook Live. I'm going to drop a link uh, down below and you will have an opportunity to visit her and find out more about her there. So we have come once again to the end of another episode of Carolyn's Psychic Playroom. If you have questions or comments, by all means write me and if you would like to receive a live reading from me, well, it wouldn't be live, would it? But a reading on a future episode of Carolyn Psychic Playroom, write me at psychicplayroom at gmail.com or you can drop me a note at my website, www.carolynwilkins.com. All right, everybody. See you next time. Thoughts are things with the energy To make life better for you and for me Touch the light